Hey, it's me, Bobby Daddy Dree, and this is my review of the spiritual successor of Bansho Kasuri, Luke for the Xbox One. Now, before I begin the actual review, I just want to say that I backed this game on Kickstarter. I got the retro pack that comes with the N64 like box and cartridge plus artbook slash manual. Now, comparing the Luke cartridge with the Bansho Kasuri one, it looks like the same, especially on the back with the Nintendo logo and the years on it. It seems that Platonic used old unused Bansho Kasui cards to make this, which is pretty awesome. Anyways, back to the game review. It seems that this game has mixed reviews. Some people like it while others hate it. Now whose side am I on? Let's find out. Look at it, it's a collector on game where you get items like feathers and pages and use them to progress through the game by getting new moves or opening or expanding worlds. So if you play Banjo Kazooie or Super Mario 64, you should be familiar with this concept. The controls work great most of the time. Pretty much every jump and ability I do, I was able to perform it without any trouble. The only moves I had some trouble with is the rolling, going up the slopes, mainly because of the turning it can be loose at times, and the flying move to get collectibles. Keeping it steady is difficult because turning your character is very sensitive. Also the camera can be a bit of trouble especially in tight places, but it is manageable. There are 5 worlds plus the hub world in this game and they are big. And here's this, the major complaint that some reviewers have. Now some people didn't like the huge worlds mainly because it felt empty or it was too spread apart. Personally, I didn't feel this way myself. I like exploring areas in this kind of game and there's always somewhere to go so you're never lost and you always have a mission or solving a puzzle so it's not like you're doing nothing for a long time. Now with that being said, when you have to backtrack to a part of the world, it does get tedious and that's when the open area does prey against you. Being a spiritual successor of Banshee Kasui, I think Yukade has a nice balance between keeping old traditions and having its own identity. Of course Yukade are both Banjo and Kasui personality wise, and although the side characters have different personalities, their roles are pretty much the same. Yuka and they may be a common copy of Banjo and Kasui in personality, but their ability makes up for them. I love all the movesets of the game even with the nitpicks of a couple of them that I mentioned earlier ago. They really took advantage of the chameleon and bat concept and really built their movesets around that. They could have easily have two similar animals that uses the exact same movesets as Banjo and Kazooie, but I'm glad they rested with something different and create a whole new experience at the same time bring us the same experience that we had over 20 years ago. My favorite moves are the sonar brass, the skin curve chains, getting to platform with your turn, and of course the transformation, especially the helicopter. Pretty much what I'm saying is that I like all the moves that they have. There was never really once where I didn't like a move or didn't use a move because I didn't find it useful. I mean, yeah, some moves are better than others, but I still use even the basic move when I have the chance, mainly because it's easier or to save it from the power meter. Oh yeah, there's a power meter that I kind of dislike, mainly because it sometimes takes a while to fill up once it's empty. The one thing I wish they kept from the original Bencho Kasui game is using another item to use your abilities. I can understand nothing in ability, so you won't overuse the um, power moves too much. But I think using something like similar to the gold feathers to give Banjo and Kazooie invisibility would have been a much better way to approach this game rather than the power bar that they gave us in this game. During most of my playthrough, I was really enjoying the game. It brought back memories of a younger me playing the original game and the currently liking the new stuff as well as referencing the old stuff. 
But there are two things that keep this game down for being a great game. And that's the Minecraft games and Retro's Arcade games. The objective of the Minecraft games is to collect a certain amount of gems and make it to the finish. That sounds simple enough, but the problem is that if you get hit, it will reduce your gems and that happens a lot in my playthrough. Some of the enemies are placed so close that you don't have enough time to react to dodge them, and other times the hitbox are questionable at best. Sometimes I feel like I got them but I end up getting hit instead. As for the uh, Mechtros games, it was just brand and boring minigames. It's not the worst thing of this game, but it is pretty much a time waster. Overall, I'm glad I backed this game on Kickstarter, and whatever games that Praetonic Games have next, whether it be a sequel to this game, a brand new game, or maybe another spiritual successor of one of the older games, I'll be looking forward to it. I think Bench and Story fans will enjoy this game for what it is, and newcomers can get into this game pretty easily. Those who don't like collector on games will most likely not like this game due to the um, long padding and exploring through all areas, trying to get every single collectible there is. But personally, I enjoy playing this game, and I plan on getting the Nintendo Switch version when it comes out so I can take it around to me, you know, when I go out of town. So, how does it compare to the original Banjo Kazooie game? Well, you gotta find out in my next video, Luke Lady vs. Banjo Kazooie, so stay tuned for that. This is me, Baba Daddy Dree, and I'll catch you guys later.